Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla and on today's video I want to talk about mobile charging because Tesla in their infinite wisdom have stopped giving you the mobile connector which I always found to be something that's quite useful. You have to go and buy it now but there are alternatives so we're going to find out is it worth buying one of the third party chargers like this one from Tesseri? I suspect that most EV owners have got some kind of external wall box fitted like this uh, QBV charger, which I had fitted a few years ago. It just means that charging is faster, it's more secure, but you absolutely can charge a car with a big battery like a Tesla on domestic power on a normal plug. You really can, it takes a lot longer, but there's nothing to stop you from doing it. I did a video on that last year. In fact, I think I've done several videos talking about that, what I described as the granny charger, the Tesla mobile connector, which is supposed to be for when you take a trip to granny's house, you need to go and plug the thing in. But an awful lot of people were saying that they charge on that exclusively and it works absolutely fine. So for a lot of people, that Tesla mobile connector is a really useful thing to have. So when you buy this car, you still get the public charging cables, so the Type 2 to Type 2 here in Europe, in other parts of the world, you have a different connector, but I'm sure you get a cable with those plugs on it. But you don't get the mobile connector anymore. Here in the UK, it's a £180 accessory now, rather than something that's supplied with the car. So I just wondered whether there were any alternatives out there, and you start having a look around on websites, and yes, there are third parties who will sell you a charger. Is the Tesla one worth the money or are some of the alternatives, which are a little bit cheaper, also worth a look? Tesseri have sent me their mobile charger to review. This is the UK version because I live in the UK, which has got a UK plug on it. I have unzipped the carry case before I started filming because if you're a regular on the channel, you will see that I'm not very good at doing things one-handed and quite frankly, this zip isn't particularly clever and really doesn't like being unzipped even with two hands. Anyway, inside the bag, you get the device itself. It's on a five meter cable. Now, five meters is fine, but the Tesla one is a six meter cable. And that does make a difference if the socket that you're trying to plug into is more than five meters away from the other end of the car. And I do occasionally get some comments with people who say, well, why do you park the wrong way around for your charger? It's literally because of the layout of where I live. This is the best way of doing things. So five meters, which means that this will not actually reach the charge point on my car, but the Tesla one does because it's six meters. So what we're going to have to do is get the extension lead out. And let me talk a little bit about extension lead safety when I do so. So whenever I talk about charging, I get um, armchair experts, shall we say, in the comments, popping up and going, uh, you're not an electrician, uh, you shouldn't be giving electrical advice. Well, you're correct. I'm not an electrician. You should get electrical advice from an electrician. So to start off with, my outdoor sockets, which somebody was slagging off last time, were installed by an electrician specifically for car charging. That is what they are there for. They have been wired properly. They have been checked properly. They are fine. This is a heavy duty 13 amp cable. This is designed to be able to take heavy loads like a car charger. So although Tesla and Tessery say, do not use an extension cable, People like me have been using extension cables for a long, long time. And I'm going all the way back to 2014, charging my Nissan Leaf using an extension cable. If you've had a Sparky, check your sockets and said that they're okay, and you're using a proper cable, then everything should be fine. But there are precautions that we're going to take anyway. So safety point number one with an extension lead, always make sure that you've unwound the thing fully. You do not want cable with power sat in a spool you're going to have a bad time so make sure that you've undone the thing all the way down 
before you then plug anything into it. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to get the tessery cable and we're going to plug it into the extension lead. Now, it does say in the manual for this cable, do not plug it into an extension lead. And I'm fairly sure that they're not gonna like me doing this. Well, I'm doing it anyway because they've made the cable too short to actually fit where I need to plug the thing in. Had it got a six meter cable, like the Tesla one, then we wouldn't be needing to do this. Okay, and by the way, yet another glorious sunny day. So having plugged the unit in, I've done a little bit of a zoom in on the LED screen, which shows you how much charge is actually being output. And when you press the button towards the bottom, you can change that and go to six amps, eight amps, 10 amps, 13, and it will go to 16 if you've got a power supply that will um, support that. And you can have obviously a different kind of plug. So it will fit whatever kind of uh, plug sockets you have got in your own country. Anyway, there is no point at all in trying to run this on 13 amps all day long. Dial it down to 10 amps. Basically, don't put full load through your equipment constantly. When you hear about people complaining about uh, equipment that's getting really warm or um, shorting out or whatever, it's because they've gone down to 10 amps. Now, I've gone to 10 amps and it's gone back to 13. You see that? So I've pressed to 10 amps. Let's just watch that one again. But I didn't press the button again and it went to 13 amps and it's just done it again. So it has got a mode select which is completely useless because whatever you do, it's just going to reset itself back to 13 amps. So I'm a little bit confused by this. So let's plug it in and have a look at what happens. Okay, so the first thing that happens is you've now got an LED display that's showing you what it's doing, which is actually that is quite useful to be fair. So at the moment, yeah, okay, it's starting to ramp up. So 1.7 out of 13 amps. So we don't want to be on 13 amps. Yeah, we want to be on 10 amps. So let's try that one again. We're now on 10 amps. Okay, and it's charging at 13 amps. Okay, so We want to go to 10 amps, please. Yeah. So 10 amps plugged. And it's charging at 13 amps. I honestly don't quite see the point in having an LED display with a button with a nice push here thing to show you what it's doing when you're changing the voltage. If the voltage then doesn't actually change if the amps that you're feeding into it do not change so we're going to go and do it the way that you do it on the tesla one and that is go into the car and change it on here so here you go 10 amps okay that is much better so i have now set the charge limit to 63 percent and we're on 43% because I just wanted to see how long is it going to take to put uh, that amount of power in when we are down on 10 amps. So 10 amps is going to give us like 2.2 or something kilowatts. Okay, so it's just clicked over onto 44%, but you can see seven and a half hours to do 20% of the battery. So you are talking about more than a day, actually a day and a half, at this speed to be able to charge the battery from completely full to be able to charge the battery from completely empty to full it's a long 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 time but if you're only doing relatively short trips or infrequent trips or you're just pottering around here and there you absolutely can use this kind of mobile charger and put usable amounts of power in while you're asleep and lots of people do okay so we are now on 10 amps rather than 13 which is good having manually had to set it like that in the car because the push here thing does nothing which isn't much use but i do like the display it shows you how long you've been charging for 
and it shows you how many watts and then kilowatts you have actually taken. That is a useful thing to have. What I found very interesting though, was when I flipped this over, get the grass off there and start reading the various different things. Okay, so um, talks about lots of different things to do, to do, to do, to do. Number six, it is forbidden to use this equipment in rainstorm. Now, this, I think, is quite an important point. So I've moved a little bit so I can actually see what I'm doing, but do not use in rainstorms. Well, I live in the United Kingdom where we get rainstorms. We get quite a bit of rain. Admittedly, I'm in the much drier northeast of Scotland, but if I was in the west side of Scotland, we'd be getting rain probably an awful lot more. So a charger that you can't use when it's raining hard seems like a bit of a problem. And this unit is IP54 rated. The Tesla one is IP55 rated. It has got more water protection than this one does. And that will make a difference because although you don't want to immerse anything like this in water, I had the Tesla one out in the rain, in the snow, without any issues. It is, if not waterproof, then certainly heavily water resistant. This one can best be described as splash proof because that's what IP54 is. It's splash proof. It's water resistant to a fairly limited point. And as an outdoor charger, that's probably a bit restrictive. So I don't quite understand why they've done that. This is the point where we need to start comparing the spec of the official Tesla mobile connector and this one from Tessery. So the Tesla one has got a six meter cable. This is only a five meter cable, which is why I've had to plug it into an extension lead because five meters isn't enough. The Tesla one is IP55 and this one is only IP54. I mean, look, it's probably okay, but that lack of water resistance compared to the official one, I think is certainly a markdown, especially when you feel the thing and it doesn't feel like premium plastics as the Tesla one does. That I think is an issue. The Tesla one has interchangeable plugs. You literally take the plug section off and then you can buy an alternative for a different market where there is a different kind of wall plug or you can put a commando plug on the end. You can do all kinds of things with the Tesla Mobile Connect. You can't do anything with this. It literally has got the plug that you buy with it and that is all that it can do. So this one is less flexible, less practical and less premium than the Tesla one. And this is where price comes into it because the Tesla one is quite expensive. It's 180 pounds. If this is a lot cheaper, then okay, it's slightly less flexible and slightly less premium, but the price is gonna be the saving, isn't it? Well, no, because this is 150 pounds. It's only 30 pounds less than the official Tesla one. So I'm not gonna say what you should buy, okay? Make your own mind up based on what your usage needs are. An awful lot of people do not need a mobile connector, mobile charger, whatever you wanna call it, where you're plugging in to a domestic socket. Clearly, a lot of people don't want them. Tesla have taken them away because they were giving this thing to owners who then weren't using it a lot. So I get it. That's why you have to pay for the thing now rather than just getting it free. But at the same time, there is a question of value for money. And the Tesla one, for an extra 30 quid over the Tessery one, for me, looks like really good value for money. It's got better waterproofing, it's got a longer lead, it's got more functionality than this one. But if you wanna get one of these ones, then the link is in the comments. But if it was my money, I'd be sticking with Tesla. And on that consumeristic note, we are going to leave it there. Let me know in the comments, how are you charging yours up? I am, as usual, fascinated by the people who are only using a domestic plug to charge their car up. 
Personally, I think it's a bit slow, but I know there's loads of you out there who say, no, it's absolutely fine. So let us know in the comments how are you getting on. <sighs> I am going to get used to doing three videos a week. At the moment, it feels like a bit of a slog. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It really does help the channel. And I will see you back here very soon on Just Get a Tesla.